that I can join you for afternoon circle. You guys ready? I'll go get her. Hey everyone. Hey Bluebird. Thanks for coming to get me. Are you guys ready for afternoon circle? Okay. Let's do Old Grand Duke of York. We usually sing that at library with Library Ann. Let's see if I can remember how she does it. There, oh, the old Grand Duke of York, he had a thousand men. He marched them up the hill and marched them down again. Okay, you have to get up every time we say that. Oh, when you're up, you're up. Get up. When you're down, you're down. And when you're only halfway up, you're neither up nor down. <laughs> that means don't be all the way up and don't be all the way down. Okay, let's try it again. Oh, the old Grand Duke of York, he had a thousand men. He marched them up the hill again and marched them down again. And when you're up, you're up. And when you're down, you're down. And when you're only halfway up, you're neither up nor down. That's fun! <laughs> well, I'm glad you liked it. Okay. Uh, oh, I heard that Slow Down Snail did the, uh, the activity with you guys today with the plants and I heard that he sang a song shall we sing that song too yeah yeah okay if you got the sun okay can you make the sun if you got the sun and if you got the rain you can plant a little seed in the old back lane you rake and you hoe and you keep the weeds down you might find, you might find a root growing down from the seed that you planted in the ground. Good. I'll do the hand motions too. If you got the sun and if you got the rain, you can plant a little seed in the old back lane. You rake and you hoe and you keep the weeds down. You might find, you might find a stem growing up from the seed and the roots that you planted in the ground. After the stem, leaves, leaves. If you got the sun and if you got the rain, you can plant a little seed in the old back lane. You rake and you hoe and you keep the weeds down. You might find, you might find some leaves growing out from the roots and the seed that and the stem that you planted in the ground. If you got the sun and if you got the rain, you can plant a little seed in the old back lane. You rake and you hoe and you keep the weeds down. You might find, you might find a flower growing up from the stem and the leaves and the roots of the seed that you planted in the ground. <laughs> it is hard remembering all those parts. Yes, there's a lot of different parts of the plants, but I think we can re-remember them in the end, right? Do you guys remember them? That's a fun song. Okay, uh, Bluebird, I'm going to read a story, and do you want to listen to it too? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Everyone say bye to Bluebird. Well, maybe we'll have her say bye at the end because she's going to stick around to listen to the story. Hey, see you. Okay. For the story, it's called The Curious Garden by Peter Brown. Hmm. I wonder what's curious about it. The Curious Garden. There once was a city without gardens or trees or greenery of any kind. Most people spent their time indoors, as you can imagine. It was a very dreary place. Oh my goodness, it looks like there's pollution everywhere, smog. Dreary indeed. However, there was a boy who loved being outside. Even on drizzly days, while everyone stayed inside, he could find Liam, that's his name, happily splashing through his neighborhood. It was on one such morning that Liam made several surprising discoveries. He was wandering around the old railroad, as he did from time to time, when he stumbled upon a dark stairwell leading up to the tracks. So 
So he's wandering around and then he discovered a way to get up to the top. The railway had stopped working ages ago and since Liam had always wanted to explore the tracks there was only one thing for the curious boy to do. Liam ran up the stairs, pushed the open the door and stepped out onto the railway. The first thing he saw was a lonely patch of color. Wild flowers! Hmm, and plants were the last things he expected to find up there, but when he took a closer look, it became clear that the plants were dying. They needed a gardener. They were struggling to live there. Liam may not have been a gardener, but he knew that he could help. So he returned to the railway the very next day and got to work. The flowers nearly drowned. He watered it too much. <laughs> and he had a few pruning problems. He cut off too much. But the plants patiently waited while Liam found better ways of gardening. Oh, do you know what he's doing here? He's singing to the plants. Have you ever done that? As the weeks rolled by, Liam began to feel like a real gardener. And the plants began to feel like a real garden. <gasps> They're looking better. Most gardens stay in one place, but this was no ordinary garden. With miles of open railway ahead of it, the garden was growing restless. It wanted to explore. The tough little weeds and mosses were the first to move. They popped up farther and farther down the tracks and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. Over the next few months, Liam and his curious garden explored every corner of the railway. Look at that. The garden went everywhere where the railroad used to. Wow. He has a field of flowers. Wow. All the bushes and trees and flowers right in the middle of the big dirty city. After spending his spring and summer and autumn with the garden, Leon's time on the railway was finally interrupted by winter. Heavy blankets of snow fell on the city that season, and for the first time since he'd become a gardener, Liam could not visit the plants. They were under the snow. There was nothing for him to do but to let them rest and sleep. Rather than waste his t winter worrying about the garden, Liam spent it preparing for spring. So he's reading about plants. After three cold months, the snow finally began to melt and Liam rolled his new gardening gear over to the railway. He found a lot of good ideas in the books. Winter had taken a toll on the garden, but thanks to Liam's planning, his handy new tools and a little help from the sun, the plants soon awoke from their winter sleep. Well, he's singing again to the plants. He's watering just right. He figured out how to prune them just right. The garden had always wanted to explore the rest of the city, and that spring it was finally ready to make its move. Once again, the tough little weeds and mosses set out first. They popped up farther and farther from the railroad and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. So now they're spilling off of the railway, and now they're going onto the roofs down to the ground. The garden was especially curious about old forgotten things. Oh, they're growing inside that bro old broken car, inside an old building, the cracks of the sidewalks. A few plants popped up where they didn't belong. Uh-oh, it's covering the stop sign. They need to be able to see it. Oh, and the fire hydrant. The firefighters need that clear so they can use it in emergency. Others mysteriously popped up all at once. Oh, he gave his neighbor a present of plants. And he's planting some other plants somewhere. Oh, he's trying to be sneaky about it. <laughs> but the most surprising things that popped up were the new gardeners. <gasps> All his neighbors are starting to garden and make beautiful plants growing everywhere. 
on the roof, on the ground. All over. Oh, wow. They made a garden stairs. They planted on the stairs. There's a nice place for a picnic they planted. Wow, they even put some plants in the waterways. And look, some animals are coming back. Because now the other living things can be there now that there's plants there. <laughs> they made the plant, the bushes, look like animals. Wow, whoa, that's a big tree. They're able to have a tree house in it. What a wonderful place now. Many years later, the entire city had blossomed. But of all the new gardens, Liam's favorite was where it all began. He has his own kids now. And look how big that little bush, with the first one that he saw from the very beginning, look how big it is now. Because he's taking good care of it. Oh, that is such a... Whoa! Look at the transformation. Let's look at the beginning. Before all the gardening and the plants, oh, the city did it, was a dreary place. And now look at it, full of life. The air is cleaner. Oh, there's so much. I think that city is a very happy city now. Not dreary at all. <gasps> did you like that story, Bluebird? I did, I did. <laughs> I'm so glad. Because you would like gardens too. Yeah, being a bird, you like to be in the trees and the bushes and the flowers and all the insects. <laughs> okay, guys, I hope you have a lovely afternoon and we will see you tomorrow. Bye.